Okay, we're going to get started on our compositing. So you're going to create a composite, or in other words, a layered composition. Um, that's going to involve a minimum of two layers. Um, you can use more if you want, but it has to have at least two. You're going to have a background and something that you put into that background. And in order to do that, you're going to have to use a number of different tools such as um, keying, which is not the same thing as keyframing. Um, it's basically removing a background color so that you get a transparency around a figure. And possibly motion tracking if your shot, if your video shot is not a lockdown shot, you will have to track its motion so that your object or um, animation will move with the camera so that it so that it looks like it's in the environment. So I'm going to start a new project to do this. And now before we get started, I want to reiterate and stress that the files um, and projects that we do as demos are not your homework project. Uh, do not allow the use of the assets that we download in, the, in your actual project. You need to create your own assets. Uh, you can create the background with a cell phone. Um, you can use something fancier if you want, but a cell phone will be fine. And um, all you have to do is basically, I mean, use your imagination, but ultimately all you have to do is whip out your cell phone and shoot some footage uh, and then create an animated object or character inside that footage. <clears throat> so. Um, just make sure you don't turn in any of the assets in the unit as part of your project. Do a new composition, and I'm going to make sure I'm on HDTV 1080p, 24 frames a second. The um, minimum duration that this is going to be is 20 seconds, and the maximum it's going to be is 2 minutes. So. For now, I'll just go with one minute. That'll be fine. I can change that later if I need to. And click OK. So, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a save as. And I'm going to make new folder after effects tutorial. And this is composite. So I'm going to go to our D2L page here, and in the unit three, there's a number of pieces of um, um, assets, a number of assets that you can play with here. I'm going to focus on just a couple right now. The first one is going to be green screen footage, zombie group walking by. I want you to click the down arrow on that one. Go to download. And we're going to go to GS1, click the down arrow on that one, and go to download again. Ooh, come on back. There we go. Download. And I'm going to open this up in folder. And I'm going to copy this to my tutorial folder. And I'm going to copy this to my tutorial folder as well. Okay. So back.
back over to After Effects and I'm going to double click my assets and navigate to my tutorial folder. I'm going to open GS1 and this is going to be our background for this first composite and this one's going to be nice and easy because the background is a stationary lockdown shot so um, there isn't a whole lot to do in the way of um, motion track well not at all there's no motion tracking so um, that makes it easier in that in that respect so let's double click on this and go to the green screen footage zombie group walking by and this is a longer bit of video than we need so I just double clicked on this to get it open and there's there's a bunch of green screen examples here and we're gonna just pick one um, this first one is is fine it doesn't really matter which one you fit you pick as long as you get one that's um, in front of this green background we need this green background as a way of um, creating a transparency the green will become transparent so I thought I was on the first one. The first one's a little bigger. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to use these two keys to set the endpoint. And then the out point is going to be we don't want that cut in there, so at the out point so I've got an in point of 34 seconds and four frames an out point of 48 seconds and just click the overlay edit I'll undo that and show it again just in case you missed it overlay edit right here that'll just put a layer on top of your current layer and that works pretty well. So this is, if you turn the visibility off, this is covering the background that we just put in. Now I'm going to create a transparency by using keying and that's going to be under effect uh, keying and the first one is probably gonna, let's see here, we could probably use color range for the first one that works pretty well so um, this creates a color selection that will become the transparency so you can see why green screening is um, is what it is it's it's needed to create this transparency and put it into a different background so if you select the under the color range effect if you select the eyedropper we're going to click on the green and we're going to create this transparency like that. And fuzziness, if you bring it up a little bit, it will create kind of a uh, softer, smoother transparency. Now, clearly we're not done yet. So you can see that there's still a lot of green spill um, which is completely normal. What happens is the light will shine on the subject, uh, it will shine on the green screen and it will usually bounce onto the subject and some of their skin, like the edges of their skin, will be lit up green. Uh, the other thing that can happen is if they're casting shadows, the shadows might be green as well. And make sure those, if you're using something that casts shadows, you want to make sure that it's going in the same direction as the lighting in the composition, which this one is. So if it's like in the wrong direction or something, it kind of breaks the illusion. So um, so let's fix that green. This is an easy fix. Uh, this is part two of the of creating this transparency. Go to Effect, Keying, Advanced Spill Suppressor. Um, sometimes 
just putting it on is enough. So we've got a pretty good suppression. They do have kind of a black outline, uh, which might not be exactly exactly desirable if you want. Um, we can change on the basic spill suppressor. There's just the amount of suppression. Um, but I like the ultra one a little better. Um, we can pick the key color and create some different um, so, uh, parameters. So the spill range, first of all, usually about 50% is about right or a little lower. Uh, I'm going to go with 35 on that one. And that kind of tamps down the, the color a little bit. And then the desaturate Desaturate is kind of a way to create the um, create an integration with the with the environment. So, if you desaturate it a tad, um, depending on how far away they are from the camera, that can help create kind of a hazy look. So, I'll leave that at about fifty, which is no desaturation at all. So, and then there's tolerance here. And that is kind of the range of greens that will, that will be corrected. And spill color correction is the last bit here. And this one kind of takes care of some of those outlines. So if I put that up to 100%, it brings it down a little bit, and I can take it down and the outlines will come back. Um, putting it up to 100%, um, it get gets rid of the outlines and at the same time also um, eats into the edges of the characters just a tiny bit. So, and I'm seeing some magenta appear and that's from that uh, color range that I did earlier. I'm going to bring that up to 50. No, I'm going to bring it down. I'm sorry. Take it down to 20. So yeah, there's still a little magenta visible, but I think it's good. So this gives you, by the way, all these, I didn't mean to click that, but everything in in Adobe um, After Effects is keyable. You can see a stopwatch next to every single attribute on these effects. So all of that stuff is keyable. Um, not that there's really any need to, but I'm just pointing out that it's that it can all be animated. And, and when I say animated, I mean like a change in the value of tolerance from the first frame to the last. But um, it's not necessary, so uh, uh, I'm just trying to make the point that everything is keyable. So if I press space, we'll get a look at how this played out, which mostly worked. Um, this guy's floating, which is a problem with the source footage. I'm not really concerned about it, but you could you could fix it by bringing the shadows up closer if you were doing this for for money you'd probably want to not have him floating off the ground but this gives us a pretty decent composite uh, easily done because the background is static it's not moving so let's go ahead and save that and let's do a new composition. Composition new. Comp 2 will be good. And we're going to click OK. Now let's go back to our D2L site. And I want to have the Juno Alaska footage, Juno AK. Let's download that. Go 
to my it makes it a zip file I, I can't prevent that just something D2L does so I'm going to open that up and copy it to my project folder again okay and let's go back to After Effects that. I'm not sure why my double click isn't working. I'll press control I. There we go. Oh, because I wasn't on the project panel, that's why. Okay, and this is a small piece of footage, less than five seconds long. Uh, I'm gonna change the duration of the work area and the composition with these two blue handles right here. So, and I'm going to do the work area first. So, can you see that blue handle over there? If I click on that and I just pull it back, I'll get right here. And then if I hold down shift, it'll snap to the to the end of that footage or whatever footage that you're near. And then I'll pull the work area back or the uh, composition duration back so that it's more in line with the duration of the footage. So when you shoot your f background footage, um, you don't really need to use a tripod. I'm going to turn off the audio. We don't need that audio. It's probably going to look a little bit like this. So it's going to be handheld, not, not, perfectly, um, not perfectly locked down like the other shot was. So what we need to do is if we're going to put something in there that looks like it's part of the shot, um, we're going to have to have it move with the camera. So if I create an ellipse, let's try that again. That's what I wanted. I think I had my Juno layer highlighted. So I want my shape layer separate from the Juno layer. Now when I press play, it's going to just kind of, it's going to sit stationary while the footage moves, so watch. So as you can see, not very believable. Now we're going to call this our UFO here, and we're going to want the UFO to be, um, as you can see, it's just stationary over the footage, and the footage has a wiggly camera, so we got to fix that. Uh, and you could do that by keyframing and trying to mimic every little move, but that would be terrible. Uh, instead, we're going to use the motion tracker to analyze the footage and apply it to the UFO. So um, we have to center the pivot point on this UFO before we start, and it would be a good idea to rename it to, let's rename the shape layer 1 to UFO. And then if you remember this little chestnut, so we can remember how to center pivot points. Just tell me how to do it! Select your shape, Y, grab the anchor point, move it towards center, hold control, and release the mouse. Okay, cool. So, I'm going to press Y, hold control, and release the mouse so that this anchor point is centered on the object here. Now let's create a new layer by right clicking on the layers panel, go to new, and this is called a null object. So we need to create something that will inherit the movement of the camera and apply it as an intermediary to the to the UFO and the reason we need that is because there's going to be a keyframe on every single frame uh, and that will be very difficult to animate with so um, what we do is we create this null object and it's going to have what's called a parent-child relationship so the child of this null will inherit everything um, all the positioning and so on, every attribute of the object. And I'm going to right click on that and rename null1 to UFO parent. And under UFO, under the parent and link, I'm going to click on that drop down and make the parent UFO parent. 
So this layer, the shape layer, UFO, its parent is UFO parent. Now I'm going to analyze the motion on this footage by highlighting the footage and I'm going to click on track motion. Now that gives us a track point and notice that we've got a new layer here. We're not looking at the composition anymore, so don't miss that. Um, that's an easy thing to trip up on. And I want to make sure that my playback head is at the beginning. Now what I want in order to accomplish this task is um, this track point is going to watch an area of the footage and it's going to try to follow it. Um, in order to do that, you want an area of high contrast. So, um, and it has to be something that's stationary. And I don't mean, obviously the camera is not stationary, but it has to be something in the world that's stationary. So, even though this car might work, you would be tracking the additional motion of that car driving forward, which is not, not going to accomplish what we want. A good choice in this footage, because I've done this a bunch of times, is the telephone pole up here. That will be something that this track point can easily follow. And it's kind of hard to manipulate at this zoom, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit to 100%, and we can see this icon a little bit better. So there's two rings, um, or two squares, I guess. Uh, the outer one is sort of extra information the inner ring is the main thing that the track point is looking at and then the central crosshair is the exact target and that's what it's going to really look closely at to try to follow so and if you use the space bar you can use the hand tool to slide that zoomed view around so that you can see the telephone pole now in order to move this um, you want to click not dead center because dead center will move the actual target and I don't want that so a little off center and then move it up to the telephone pole and kind of target that lamp right there and you can change the size of these areas if you want to search more information or a different shape or something like that um, and sometimes that can be really helpful. So now in this piece of footage, I've done this lots of times. So I've got a pretty good idea of how to make this work. In your footage, it's probably going to take some trial and error. You're going to be fiddling with this at least a little bit, most likely. Um, it's simple and it's difficult all at the same time. So the actual technical process is fairly simple. Um, once we've got the track point set, we just want to analyze forward. And then hopefully this thing will follow the track point. So that is a pretty good motion path right there that kind of describes the path of the camera. And you'll notice that there's a keyframe on every frame here. So next thing we want to do is make sure that we're targeting UFO parent, which mine is automatically. Uh, just in case yours isn't, you'll want to click Edit Target, go to Layer, UFO Parent, and click OK. And once you're targeting the Null Layer, UFO Parent, you can click Apply, and we're going to apply Dimension X and Y. And The, um, sometimes the UFO moves and if I think if it's not dead center I thought if I centered the pivot point it would stay with me but zoom out if your UFO disappeared it's probably up here and you'll notice um, that the UFO parent has a transform keyframe on every single frame you can grab your UFO and just move it down a little bit so it's back in the frame if that happened. And then if you 
play the animation, now the UFO um, is stationary in the world, but is following the camera motion perfectly. So you can also add rotation to that. Um, you'll need another. Uh, you'll need another observation point, another track point. So um, you can see that this camera does rotate a tiny bit. There's just a there's the tiniest bit of rotation. I'm not too concerned about it. Um, you should be able to get it pretty well with just motion. But um, if you want to play with it more if you can feel free so now I'm gonna animate the actual UFO so that it's not just floating and that's why we wanted the UFO parent is so that when we do this we're not fighting with all those existing keyframes so this part is just basic keyframing um, so it's a good opportunity to review so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna have it fade in and kinda jump out of the sky um, kind of zoom in. So we're going to do a scale. We're going to drop that scale down to almost zero and keyframe it. Drop the opacity down to zero and keyframe it. And just going to go a couple frames forward and bring the opacity up to 100%. And then a couple more frames and bring the scale up to, you know, whatever. It doesn't really matter, around 100%. And so we get this kind of whoop kind of like zooms in from outer space and we can do a position keyframe and just have it kind of hover around there now it will present a problem if we um, depending on what we go in front of like I'm gonna avoid going in front of this building because that's gonna screw the shot up I could probably get away with going in front of this mountain back here but I wouldn't want to go in front of this tree right here because I'm, I want to give the impression that we're distant from the camera. Um, and this is not the best UFO design or color choice, but I, again, to reiterate, um, I'm not showing you a wonderful design and a wonderful looking project. I'm showing you the tools to create your wonderful project. So let me just bring that up a tad and we can kind of swoop in and we'll have it kind of hover around just a little tiny bit scale it up like it's kind of coming closer and then at the last second it zooms away again keyframe here as well bring that opacity down to zero you don't have to do the opacity if you don't want to I'm just kind of showing some keyframes as an opportunity to review so that last that zoom away is really fast there I, I might even want to um, you know what let's okay as it's a good review let's say the zoom away is too fast so let's slow it down a little bit I want that to happen a little bit slower so I'm gonna bring these are the these are the keyframes that zoom it away so I'm gonna bring those back and stretch them out just a little bit so that it happens not quite so fast it gives you a little chance to see it happening so that works a little better Okay, now for convenience, um, let's just uh, review rendering real quick. Let's do a composition. Um, let's do composition render, isn't it? Isn't that where it is? Add to render queue, right? Okay. And for the most part, um, the the defaults should be okay. If you click on render settings, we're going to leave the render settings all at default. It should be on use compositions frame rate. It should be on the same resolution. 
the output module. Um, you can do lossless, uh, AVI, or QuickTime. YouTube can upload either one. And again, the, the uh, defaults should be just fine. We don't need audio in this. If you want to use audio, I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying we don't need it, so you can turn it off if you want to. Um, and then if you click OK, and here's where you determine what the file name will be. This should go into your project folder. This is pointing me at my old project folder, so just make sure you're on your current project folder. And you can call that composite and click render and now let's go to YouTube make sure you're on your LCC account I see there I am I'm on my LCC account I can't accept it from your personal account so please do do it from LCC channels and let's go to upload video and I'm going to click the up arrow or select files and go to my tutorial folder or your homework folder in this case and there's composite.mov and click open and this is just where you will set the title of the video if you want to write in a description this has nothing to do with your grade it's just for you um, if you want to add it to a playlist. And again, just a reminder, under visibility, you want to have it unlisted or public. Do not choose private. Just as a reminder, don't choose private. If you choose private, I can't see it and neither can your classmates. So um, unlisted if you don't want anybody to be able to search it and public if you want it to be publicly searchable. This thing will upload and it will give you the link to your video here and you can post that along with your self-analysis. And have fun should be a fun project. One of the things that I enjoy doing um, if you want extra credit on this project, post this on social media and see how many people you can get to believe it's a real UFO sighting or or whatever it is you're doing. See how many people you, you can get to believe that it's real. And um, I find it fun if you want to. That's, that's a way of uh, offering extra credit for this project. So have fun with it.